I'm Popcorn, and today I'd like to talk about Call of Duty World War II, why I don't think it will be the hard reset that Call of Duty needed this year, and what I'd love to see in future World War II based Call of Duty games. The first leaked images of Call of Duty World War II show an M1928 Thompson submachine gun, albeit incorrectly equipped with M1A1 style rear sight protectors, being held up by a member of the US 1st Infantry Division. Promotional material for the game, which was also leaked, hints that the game will feature the Normandy landings and a fight across Europe. It also says, with regard to the multiplayer, that the game will feature many of World War II's most iconic locations. And honestly, this is all more than a little disappointing. Battlefield 1 was fresh. It set itself apart by taking a risk and trying something new. Its campaign took us to Gallipoli, took us to the Middle East. We followed the camaraderie of a British tank crew clawing its way to Cambrai to take part in the last major tank offensive of the war. Even the opening of the game was unlike anything I'd ever really played before, as the Harlem Hell fighters stand their ground against a German attack before pushing back in their own massive counter-offensive. Every time you die, the character's name, date of birth and date of death show up on the screen. It was exciting, it was history that wasn't overused in games, it told stories of a conflict that games hadn't really covered before. And then Call of Duty World War II comes in, promising a breathtaking experience that redefines World War II, but let's be honest, it won't. Instead of something brand new, or at least something that hasn't been overdone, the promotional materials say we'll land in Normandy on D-Day and fight through Europe. This means Operation Neptune, Operation Overlord, and subsequent fighting in Western France. You know what other games have featured Operation Overlord in their campaigns? Here's a partial list. Medal of Honor Allied Assault features the 2nd Ranger Battalion storming Omaha Beach. Medal of Honor Frontline starts with the 2nd Ranger Battalion storming Omaha Beach. Medal of Honor Allied Assault Spearhead starts with the 101st Airborne landing in drop zone able to take out artillery at San Martin de Barreville. Call of Duty's American campaign has your paratrooper landing in drop zone Charlie with the goal of securing Sainte Mère Église. Call of Duty 2's American campaign starts with the 2nd Ranger Battalion's assault on Point d'Orc. Call of Duty 2 Big Room 1 features the US 1st Infantry Division's landing on Omaha Beach. Brothers in Arms Road to Hill 30 and Brothers in Arms Earned in Blood features the 502nd Parachute Infantry Regiment landing in Normandy to fight at Saint Combe de Mont, Saint Martin de Valville, and later Caraton. Brothers in Arms D Day follows the airborne assault on Normandy through to the liberation of Saint Sauveur. Brothers in Arms DS follows the 101st Airborne's drop into Normandy through the assault on Caraton. Medal of Honor Vanguard follows 82nd Airborne glider insertions as part of Mission Chicago, Detroit, or Elmira. The Medal of Honor Airborne has the player participate in action at Audeville Laubert on D Day as part of the 82nd Airborne's Mission Boston. And finally, Medal of Honor Heroes 2 features the 5th Ranger Infantry Battalion on assault on Omaha Beach. There are so many World War II based games. Single player campaigns, cooperative, competitive multiplayer, real time strategies. They've extensively covered the European theatre, the North African campaign, the Italian campaign, the Russian campaign, and the Pacific theatre. They've done squad games, games where you're undercover for the OSS or SOE, games where you're a lone wolf sniper, games where you're part of a squad, games where you lead a squad, games where you drive tanks, games where you fly combat operations in planes, games where you strategically control your naval forces, games where you have a top-down view of the whole army under your control. The biggest question for me is, what can Sledgehammer actually offer? What can they bring to make this something other than just another World War II shooter, or just another Call of Duty? They can't just say, it's World War II, bitches, drop the microphone and moonwalk backwards off the stage. They have to do something to win me over, because if this game plays like Advanced Warfare or Black Ops 3, but without exosuit jump boosting and... Activision said Infinite Warfare was not in line with player expectations, then I don't think I'll miss much by passing on it. Especially as I will probably still be playing Battlefield 1 later this year, and then I'll be looking forward to AAA titles like Red Dead 3, Destiny 2, and Battlefront 2, all of which are supposed to release around the same time as the next Call of Duty. Now keep in mind that this is only Sledgehammer's second independent game. How much freedom do you think Activision will really give them to change the formula of Call of Duty, its biggest franchise? I reckon Sledgehammer will play it pretty safe. Reception of Infinite Warfare was lukewarm. Now the whole classic Call of Duty thing sounds great, until you realise that classic Call of Duty means no killstreaks, no weapon attachments, no perks, no customizable classes. And sure, these reversions would certainly make the gameplay very differently, but I think these have been good additions that have been made to Call of Duty over the years for a deeper, more versatile multiplayer experience. So here's what I'd really love to see in this new game. 
I want Sledgehammer to get rid of the laser beam guns, like the MP40 in World at War, the M16 in Call of Duty 4, and the ACR in Modern Warfare 2. I want weapons to have more recoil, so it's harder to land hits at longer ranges, and this in turn would increase the perceived time to kill, because semi and fully automatic weapons would need to be fired more slowly, at least at a distance, to keep rounds on target. I want to see larger maps with longer sight lines. I want structured multiplayer level design, kinda like Black Ops 3, but without such obvious lanes. What I don't want is Swiss cheese map design like Advanced Warfare had. It made it very hard to gain traction or feel like I was actually helping my team, because it seemed like every time I got one or two kills, someone would boost slide up behind me from some random angle and shoot me in the back at close range. The death was so fast I couldn't even react or didn't have time to break line of sight so I could heal. I want the size of multiplayer lobbies to be doubled, to go along with the larger maps I want. 12v12 multiplayer for team deathmatch, especially if they're going to get rid of the killstreaks, would help keep the pace of the game up without relying on things like artillery barrages, bombing runs, dogs, or cartoony instant kill crap like slamming the ground in Advanced Warfare or Black Ops 3. Finally, I'd like to see the return of the war game mode from Call of Duty 3 and World at War, which could certainly take advantage of those bigger maps I want. It was a cool game mode and it was quite different from anything that Call of Duty has had before or since then and it's something that Battlefield recently tried to emulate with its Frontlines mode. And now, for the comment of the week. Adam Rays, complaining about someone bitching in one of the bitchiest comments I've ever seen on YouTube, whilst simultaneously disparaging fully half of the world's population, is probably not the most effective way to get your point across. Everything is fucking grey! Doesn't even make sense. This is what the game looks like, you imbecilic twat, and if all you can see is grey, then maybe it's time to book an appointment with an ophthalmologist. Plus, this isn't even a gameplay video, it's a commentary video. So the idea is for the focus to be on the commentary, not on the gameplay. Which means that your irrelevant comment about not getting any good footage of anything is pointless. Your incorrect understanding of how sex works, coupled with your subscription to edgy countercultural channels like those with 420 in the name and Vice, and dear god I hope you don't think that's a legitimate news source, makes me suspect that despite this internet tough guy act, you are in fact an asthmatic suburban teenager whose mum drives you and your friends to the mall in an Escalade she bought with her ex-husband's money and who uses an Xbox One as an electronic babysitter. Here's an idea for the next time you plan on opening your mouth to contribute something. Don't. You have nothing valuable to add, and all you do is lower the average IQ of whatever room you occupy, even an empty one. What would you like to see in Call of Duty World War 2? Let me know in the comment section below. I'll talk more about Call of Duty later this week after the official reveal. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.